Would you make some noise for Jesus? Come on, isn't it so good to know that we have someone who is real and his name is Jesus and it doesn't matter how hard we may have fallen. It doesn't matter how, how much of a knucklehead you were. It doesn't matter what kind of family you came from. What's so amazing is that none of those things are more powerful than the love and the power of Jesus. He can restore you. Tell your neighbor, he can restore you. Tell your neighbor, he could change you. I'm just so excited. How many, how many in this room are you just thankful to God to be alive today? You just, come on. Could you, could you do me a favor? Can you raise your hand if you know you should be dead right now, but God had a different plan? Look around. Oh, man. I'm just so thankful to God because I believe that it's his love and his grace and his mercy that has rescued me. It's where the passion comes. This is not hype. I don't prepare to, to do this message and look in the mirror and start screaming to see if I can motivate you. This passion comes from a place called gratitude. I'm telling you, Practice it, never forgetting what he sets you free from, never forgetting what he's done. I don't care how small it looks or how big it looks. Thank God that he has brought you to this place where you stand today. You're alive and you're breathing today because of God. I remember in, in continuation school right here in San Bernardino at Sierra, I remember getting into an altercation with some people and I remember running because the cops came to the scene and as they're coming to the scene, a guy pulls out a gun to my face like probably from where, you, where the crowd starts to right here. And it was a guy that I got the better of in the altercation and now he was kind of like, what's up now? And he pulled up with two girls driving and he opened the back door and he pulled out his gun and I just remember thinking like, if that's ever happened to you, I know sometimes you see in the movies, you think, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do this. You know what I did? I kind of froze because I'm running full speed in that direction. They cut me off. And I remember he hesitated. And when I seen him hesitate, I booked it to the, where the elementary school is right there by the Waterman Discount Mall, jumped that fence and ran into that playground. Cops came and I just hid there for a while. And then I walked to the Waterman Gardens before they were how nice they are now. But you know what that is to me? It's a memory of God's love and his grace for me. It's not a, it doesn't haunt me. I don't, I don't praise that lifestyle. It's just a reminder to me that, Gabe, there were so many times you should have been dead. There were so many times the devil had a plan for you, but God's plan interfered for you because he loves you so much. Some of you in this room right now, you're suicidal. You're thinking about suicide right now. In church, you are even thinking about suicide. I'm telling you right now, that is not the plan of God for your life. I'm telling you right now, if you would surrender your life to God, God will save your life. God will give you a life that you could never imagine or never dream of. God will fill you with the love that you desire. I really believe genuinely in my heart that today people are going to be up here at this altar that were contemplating, contemplating suicide. And you're going to feel the healing power of Jesus and he's going to set you free from those demons that have been tormenting your mind. Look, I'm not going to tell you you're crazy. I, I believe that you're in a fight. Some of you guys are saying, man, I, I just hear these things and I go through these things. Everyone's calling me crazy in my family or whatever it is. I understand where you're at. And I want you to understand, someone understands even better than I do and his name is Jesus. Tonight, we're going to talk about deliverance. And I'm going to explain it. I'm only going to teach for about maybe 15 minutes. And then we're going to actually start allowing people to experience inner healing and deliverance. Who's ready for that tonight? Deliverance 
is about love. That's what deliverance is about. Inner healing and deliverance is an act of war based on God's relentless love for a soul. It's a war. It, does, it looks a little violent at times. Sometimes people are like scared of it because it is a war happening. But you got to understand, in that war, in that battle, you got nothing to be afraid of because Jesus is on your side and he is going to have the victory at the end of the night. We're going to go ahead and pray. I'm going to teach just for a little bit and we're going to get into this. Father, I thank you for every person here right now. Open our hearts and our minds, God. Just repeat after me. Say, Jesus, today... I open my mind. I open my heart to you. If there's anything in me that needs to come out of me, that needs to be healed, let it be done tonight. Expose it in me tonight. In the name of Jesus, I cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Let your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You know, right before I get into this message, I want to let you guys know this Sunday night, we're going to be taking over Hollywood Boulevard again. I don't know if you remember, last, last year we partnered up with a friend of mine named Ross and we're going to be doing it again tonight. And you know what's amazing? Because they know we're a disciple-making church. They said, hey, would you guys lead all of the altar call? And you could have all their numbers. You guys could follow up on all those people. And you make the disciples that come to the altar that day. You're talking about hundreds and hundreds of people that are going to get saved. And we're going to be able to bring them into not just the kingdom of God, but discipleship. So it's Sunday night. Write that down. Sunday night at 5 p.m. Okay, in front of the Chinese theater. Okay, that means this. This is the second time in history that Christians have shut down that block. Okay, the first time we were, we were there last year. This is the second time. And if you want to work the altars with us, if you work any altars here at the church or any campus, just reach out to me or any of our LA team. But that's going to be Sunday at 5 o'clock. You're invited to be there. It's going to be very powerful. The title of this message if you're taking notes, is Jesus the Master Deliverer. Jesus the Master Deliverer. That means when you become a master of something, that means you've perfected it. Jesus is the Master Deliverer. Not me, not any person. Jesus is the Master Deliverer. Deliverance is freeing someone from the control or influence of evil spirits. So if you're wondering, what, is this whole, what does this word deliverance mean? Deliverance is freeing someone from the control or influence of evil spirits. This happens through the authority of God. Someone say, God has all authority. So it happens through the authority of God, shown by Jesus, and continued by his disciples through the Holy Spirit. The mission of deliverance is to restore individuals to spiritual and physical wholeness, demonstrating the power and love of God. It's an act of love. When God is coming to set us free, he, what he's doing is he's saying, I love you so much that those things that have been tormenting you, those things that have been holding you down, those sicknesses, those diseases, those things that have been attacking your body, I love you and I want to intervene with you and now I'm going to set you free. So tonight we're going to break it down into three parts. We're going to learn a little bit first about inner healing and deliverance. Second part, we're going to prepare ourselves for inner healing and deliverance. And then the third part, we're going to be healed and delivered tonight. And as I'm teaching you tonight, if anything comes to mind, anything comes to mind that you feel I need to be delivered from, I'm struggling with something, and it's a, a cycle in my life, I can't break it, I tried, I'm doing all these things, I want you to write that down, okay? And this 
service today is for everyone. This is for every volunteer, every leader, every pastor. This is for every single person in the room. The reason why you're in the room is because it's for you. If you think it's not for you, you can miss out on a great opportunity of freedom that God is trying to get to you. So Jesus is our example. You know what's cool about looking at Jesus as your example? You can't mess nothing up because he's perfect. Jesus is our example and foundation for deliverance. Jesus himself came against demons in Mark 1, through 26. Jesus cast out an unclean spirit of a man in the synagogue. If you check out the verse in New King James Version, verse 21, it says, Then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Now there was a man in their, in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Verse 25, but Jesus rebuked him saying, be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Who did this deliverance? Jesus. Remember I talked about deliverance is the authority of God being displayed. Jesus showed us, but it continued through his disciples. We are his disciples. Christians, followers of God, we're his disciples. Two important points to notice about that verse. Number one, Jesus dealt with the demon, not the man. The demon spoke out to, the demon spoke out of the man, and Jesus spoke to the demon, which translated what Jesus said was, demon, be muzzled. Sometimes when we're seeing people that are going through things in their lives, we think that we want to get in an argument with them. We want to we want to start to addressing the person, but you have to understand a lot of times the people that you're dealing with that you're talking to, it's more than that. It's not just I want you to understand. If you want to learn how how to how to really have peace in your marriage, just remember that anything that your spouse dishes out at you has nothing to do with her love for you, his love for you, because it, your fight is not flesh against, against flesh and blood enemies. You're fighting against real demons, real uh, attacks of the devil, demons that try to influence your, your, your marriage and you and things like that. It's bigger than the person that is standing in front of you. A lot of times even with parents, raise your hand if you're a parent. I was a youth pastor for so many years, was able to just really lead up a great generation, and now I have two of my sons, and they're just little cute boys right now. They haven't hit their teenage stage yet. But one of the things that I've, I noticed is that we could get so distracted with the behaviors, so distracted with what we see on the outside, not understanding that there's some inner healing and deliverance that needs to happen on the inside. And the only thing that gives you the influence with people to bring about inner healing and deliverance is love. Because if they do not feel like you actually love them, they're not going to trust you to be vulnerable to you. They're not going to be willing to lay everything out, all of their sins, everything, things that they've never told anybody. They're not going to be willing to lay it all out unless they know that you love them. Love is the epicenter of deliverance. If you're doing deliverances and if there's love is not the epicenter, it's not deliverance. Jesus kicked the demon, number two, Jesus kicked the demon out of the man, not the man from the synagogue. Continuing the verse, it says in verse 27, then they were all amazed so that they questioned among themselves saying, what is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. 
and immediately his fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. I want you to understand the, the greatest authority over every person, over everything is God. That means that when the devil comes and attacks you, attacks you, you could call on God to help you. And if you have faith and believe that when you call on him, he's actually going to come through and help you, you'll see his help come through for you. You guys want to hear a crazy story? Yeah, you guys always like crazy stories. Just talking about the authority and power of God, I shared this with some of the people I was training for deliverance a couple months ago. There was a time when I was sitting in my office over here. I was a youth pastor. I was sitting in my office, and I get a, 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 like a bang on my door. I open it, and this guy just rushes into my office, right? I'm wondering, how did this guy get in? It's like 12 p.m., like, you know, and, he, and, he, and right away I, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm cool. Like, I'm not going to get an argument with the guy. I'm like, hey, how you doing, man? You know, I'm a pretty nice guy. How you doing? Uh, how can I help you? I go and sit down. And he's just standing by my door, and he's about maybe, you know, 20 feet away from me or so in my office. And he says, I'm here to kill you and your father-in-law, Pastor Marco. I'm here to kill both of you. And I'm like, I'm sitting down. Like, literally, I'm sitting down at my desk. I'm like, oh, okay. And, and, I, and, I, and I, just, I just was like, I don't know why I responded so calm. I'm not like, it's not because I'm so gangster or something. I just, I don't know. God just kept me calm, I guess. I was just like. Oh, okay, and, and um, where are you coming from? He, he drove all the way from like out of state or northern California or something, literally to come and do that. But I don't know what was going on because, yeah, anyways. So I'm sitting down, and he's just kind of just manifesting, which means a demon is starting to show. And I notice to my right... As a youth pastor, all kinds of random things that end up in your office. I noticed that there was a big knife like this big on the right side of my, like, off of my desk, a little over against the wall. And I don't know what the youth, were, our youth leaders were doing, like, cutting fruit or something. I don't know. We had, like, some type of potluck, and they had, like, kind of like dishes or something. And when I look at it, I notice I'm far from it. <laughs> Not because I was going to try to use it on the boy, but I look at it and I'm like, ah. Oh. And I remember the moment, I don't know if you ever had this, but has God ever like spoken to you? Like not, I didn't hear it audibly, but he spoke to you in like a split second or a moment. Like, and I couldn't explain it, but I just, I felt him and he said, if you, if you become afraid, you're going to get stabbed right now. Use your faith. I'm like. This is some real, all right. So this is why, though. Because the moment my eyes looked over to that knife, I looked back at the guy, and his eyes followed my eyes straight to that knife. And what do you think he did? He bolted straight for that knife. I'm behind the desk like this. He bolts right here, and it's probably like right over there. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm about to do right now. And the Holy Spirit just helps me. And I stand up. I said, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you now. He's running. It looked like a linebacker just hit him. Boom. Like I promise you. And it wasn't me. <laughs> he's running. And he just stops and he's, his knees lock up. His elbows lock up, and he just stops like this, and he starts screaming, and he puts his shirt over his face. Mind you, all I'm saying is I bind you in the name of Jesus, you spirit of violence. You're not going to come against me. I'm not afraid of you. I'm just, I, I ain't doing nothing. I'm not throwing nothing at him. I'm not trying to push him down, nothing like that. I'm just speaking the word, and I'm speaking with boldness and the authority of God. And so he goes to the floor. Goes down on the floor, he crumbles up in a ball. He's just basically he's being tormented by the authority of God coming out of my mouth. And as he's go going through that, I then start helping him get delivered from those demons. 
So then I start telling him, hey, bro, I said, God loves you. I said, I don't know what your plan was, but God messed the whole plan up, and now he has a better plan for you. We're going to help you get delivered right now. I know you want deliverance. I know you're being tormented by these demons that brought you all. That's a, that's a commitment. You drove far. Like, you're struggling, bro. And he was able to experience total deliverance, crying and everything, sitting at my desk after a couple of hours right in front of me, and like a whole different person. And he was able to leave with gratitude, and he just took off. I think he went like out of state somewhere and thanked the Lord, but he went out of state somewhere. <laughs> you know, he backslide. He might be like, Gabe, where you at? No, I was kidding. But we have a round two. No, I was kidding. No, but. He was able to receive the love. I want you to understand this. The authority of God, the, the authority of God will translate into love. What I mean by that is it wasn't about displaying the authority of God for the sake of displaying the authority. When it comes to a person, God always has the person in mind. Which means that his love compelled me to have compassion on that guy and say, man, this, at the end of the day, this dude is lost. At the end of the day, I don't know what he's going through. Let me just try to help him out. And God did it. That's the authority of God. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm not boasting about my own strength. I'm not boasting about my abilities. I'm boasting about the power of God and the authority of God that protects me from all snakes and scorpions and demons and anything that will try to come against me and my family. I am not afraid. I don't live a scared Christian life. I live a bold life for Jesus. Because I know who I serve. Children of God, write this down. Children of God have power over demons. Luke 10, 17 says, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. That word subject means to bring a person under one's control or jurisdiction. Typically by using force. It translates to hupatasso, which means to place or rank under, to subject, to obey. These demons have to obey a man or a woman of God. I want you to understand, they don't have an option. They want, the demons want you to think they got, they got an option. They do not got an option. They have to obey the authority of God. The authority of God is our inheritance as children of God. You got it. If you're a believer, you got it. If you're not a believer, you're going to get it tonight. So that's the first part. I want to touch just a little bit on deliverance. Second part, I want to prepare you for deliverance, okay? I, I, I have a couple conditions. The first one is that. You must want deliverance yourself. If someone dragged you into here, thank God for them. But at the end of the day, you need to make the choice that you want it. And I pray that you get it and you want it today. Because it's real. It's 100% real. And it's available for you. You don't got to earn it. You just got to believe and say, yes, God, I lay this down. And you're going to see the love flood in. But you must want deliverance yourself. Number two, receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Romans 10.9 says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And the other, number three, committed to being a disciple you have to be committed to being a disciple. One of the things that has really broke my heart is seeing people get delivered, but they go back and, and they go in cycles of deliverance because they haven't committed to being disciples of Jesus. That means to be a student. If you haven't heard of that word disciple, it means to be a student, a follower of Jesus. How can you do that? You could join a discipleship group and you could start attending all of these classes that we have. These classes that we have are anointed. These classes that we have, they're not just to keep you busy as church members. 
They're not just to give you something because every other church has a discipleship process. No, these classes are going to equip you and prepare you and give you spiritual backbone. So the next time those demons try to come back, there's proper resistance and it's through the word of God and the spirit of God. If you dropped out of a class, get back in. You're in church. What are we going to tell you? Drop out. You can't come back. No. You come back. <laughs> this ain't like you're, you're, don't think, get all your reruns in high school. Like, man, I dropped out. I didn't. No, you, you drop out. You don't finish something. Get back up and start again and then finish it this time, right? Coach yourself through that. And number four, you write down on your phone or on your notebook what you need, who you need to forgive. Who is it that you need to forgive? And I'm telling you, when you ask God this too, in, in, in this time too, just put, ask God. We're going to have a little moment of worship as well where you're going to write this down. You're going to have time to ask God. But you'd be surprised who he puts on your heart. And if he puts them on your heart, it's for a reason. Even if you feel like, no, nah, I already forgave them. Like, we're good. You might be good on a surface level, but you might not be aware that there's still that bitterness, that root of bitterness still there. It looks good on top, but there's still that root of bitterness at the bottom. So if they do you dirty again, you're going to pop off. This could help you in your future if you deal with it right now. So you're going to write down who you need to forgive. And you're going to write down what do you need deliverance from. There's two things. Who do you need to forgive? Sometimes we need to forgive ourselves. Because we feel super guilty and condemned for certain things that we did. Then you're going to write down what do you need deliverance from, okay? James 5.16 says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Are you guys ready for some wonderful results tonight? Come on. And I'm going to just quickly... Help you understand the process of deliverance now. The first step that we take when in the process of deliverance is confessing our sins and asking the Lord to forgive us. The second step that we take is we renounce and we repent of all sins. Acts 3.13-20 through 20 says, now repent of your sins and turn to God. So I'm going to say repent. So that your sins may be wiped away. Who would like some sins wiped away in this place? Let's go. That sounds like some good, that's a good plan right there. Then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. It's a promise. It's a guarantee. It will come. When you repent, there's going to be a feeling of God's love that's going to come. He's going to refresh you. And he will again send you, Jesus, your appointed Messiah. What does it mean to renounce? Renounce means to come out of agreement with, to disown something. To declare against something. To reject or decline formally. And think of it like you used to be married to that sin or that lifestyle. And what you're doing now is saying we're going to be divorcing. And there's no more. And you're taking that ring off and you're throwing it in his face. That's the only time divorce is okay. <laughs> right there. You got it right there. You're going to divorce. You're going to separate yourself from the things that have been tormenting you. You're going to separate yourself from those mindsets, from those addictions today. It means to cast off or reject deliberately. Second Chron uh, Second Chronicles 7.14, it says, if they pray to me and repent. And turn away from the evil they have been doing, then I will hear them in heaven. When will he hear you in heaven? It says, after you pray, to, it says, pray to me and repent and turn away from the evil they have been doing, which is repent and renouncing. Then I will hear them in heaven, forgive their sins and make their land prosperous again. I want to help you understand, this is not the end for you. God has a prosperous plan for you. God wants to turn everything around for you. 
Someone in this room, you feel like there's no, there's no getting better from where you are right now, and that's a lie. You can get better, but it's going to start with taking inventory and kicking out these things that are slowing you down from prospering with God. Um, Jonah 3.13, God saw the efforts to renounce their evil ways, and God relented about the disaster which he had threatened to bring on them and did not bring it. So we're going to renounce and repent of all sins. And number three, we're going to address the demon. Number four, we're going to cast the demon out. And number five, we're going to pray for the filling and baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5.18, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's all stand up. We're going to go ahead and worship team. You guys could come back out right now. What we're going to do is we're going to all together, we're going to worship one song. During that time, I want you to write down things that come to mind, people that come to mind, and you're going to begin to experience freedom and deliverance. Write it down on your notebook. Whatever you're writing it down with, just wave it at me. If it's your phone, if it's your notebook, just wave it at me. Wave it at me. Awesome, awesome. Whatever it is, if you don't have it, borrow your friends for like, hey, let's take turns. Like just whatever you could do. But write it down because what you're doing is by writing it down, what you're showing is you're serious about your freedom and your deliverance. Like I said before, you have to want it. I can't want it more than you want it. I'm not going through the tormenting pain exactly that you're going through. I'm not experiencing the exact things that you're going through. So you got to fight for yourself tonight, partnering up with the Holy Spirit. And you know what's amazing? All he asks for, all he asks for is for your participation. He doesn't, he doesn't ask you to do everything. He doesn't ask you to cast the demon out yourself. He just asks you to participate. And if any of you guys want to come up to the altar, the, the altars are open as well. Write down right now, as we're worshiping, write down whatever it is that comes on your heart, on your mind. We love you. We're going to worship just for one song. And then after that, we're going to go into actual deliverance. So we're not going to pray just yet. We're just going to worship, and then we're going to write things down. We're going to expose things, okay? Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountain, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. If you right now, if God started exposing anything to you right now, those things that you wrote down, those things are going to come out of you tonight. The addictions are going to be broken off of your life tonight. 
Come on, believe for healing. The cancer is going to leave your body tonight. Come on, we could detach that off of your body tonight. Real healing could take place right here, right now, tonight. What we're going to do is we're going to pray. You're going to experience God's freedom, God's love. And after this deliverance, after you get this breakthrough, I want you to commit to growth. I want you to commit to being a disciple. Because it's going to be a battle. But we want to walk this battle out with you. And before we start doing the deliverances, I want to give every single person in this room the opportunity to lay their life down and give their life to Jesus. Every single person here one day will breathe their last breath. Every one of us. And the most important thing is did you give your life to Jesus? I want you to do me a favor. Touch your knees real quick. Touch your knees. The Bible says that those knees right there, it talks about your knees in the Bible. Is that crazy? It says those knees, every knee will bow. Every knee will bow to Jesus Christ. At the feet of Jesus, it doesn't matter if you believe in him. It doesn't matter if you practice another religion. When you see him, you're going to realize how real he is. And when you breathe your last breath, you're going to be before him. And you're going to drop in awe that he is the king and the Lord of lords. Every knee will bow. And every time we're going to confess that Jesus is Lord. You might not, some of you are like, I'll never say that. Yeah, you will. You literally will. I'm, I'm not playing. You're going to say it one day. But this is the big question. Are you going to say it while you're here on earth? Are you going to say it on your way to hell in judgment? But you will say it. Those knees that you touched will hit the ground. That will, you, you will bow and my heart for you is that you will be in heaven forever, for eternity, celebrating with the God who actually loves you. Every one of your sins puts you in a bracket, in a place where you're doomed to hell. Because of your sins, the consequences is you will go to a place called hell. It's real. Heaven is real. Hell is real. It's as real as every person dies each day. It's real. You do not know when your last day is, but you know that you have this moment right here, right now. God made a way through Jesus. He sent Jesus Christ to be the sacrifice, which means to take on the sins that you did and committed, take on the consequences of those sins. Jesus said, hey, I love him so much. I love her so much. I know she's done wrong. I know he's done so much wrong. I know he's in cycles and, and doing all these sins, but I love him so much. I want to give him an opportunity to be with the Father forever. So I take on all his sins. I take on all her sins right here on the cross, and he died on that cross for you. On the third day, he was raised from the dead through the power of the Holy Spirit. He was raised from the dead. That means death couldn't conquer him. Death couldn't hold him down. He's here right now, and he's offering you not a religion. He's offering you a relationship with him that will change your life forever. All you have to do is believe in your heart that he's real. Put your faith in him. You're going to put your faith in something. You're, you are. Even if you don't realize it, you're putting your faith in something. Some of you, your faith is in yourself. It's in your own thoughts, your own philosophies, what you believe. 
But I'm telling you, this works. God 100% works. And if you want to put your faith in Jesus today and be forgiven of your sins, I'm going to count to three, and I'm going to ask you to raise your hands, okay? If you want to give your life to Jesus, one, two, three. Raise your hands if you're in this place you want to give your life to Jesus. Come on. Amen. Come on. One. We got one over here. We got two. Where else? Rave room so I can see you because you matter. Three, four, five, six, seven. We got a whole, a whole group over there. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Where are you at? 16, 17 in the back. Why am I counting? Because every one of you matter. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Anyone else? You want to give 31? Come on, you want to give your life to Jesus? Come on. If you raise your hand, I want you to run up here to this altar right now. Come on. Come out of your seats. Come out of your seat and come right here and join us up here at this altar right now. Come on. Give them a hand as they're coming down, guys. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. We're going to pray right now. We're going to give our lives to Jesus. Come on, make some noise for that. We're going to give our lives to Jesus right now. And after that, this is what's going to happen. We're going to give our lives to Jesus. We're going to lay our sin down. We're going to lay everything down to Jesus. And what's going to happen after that? We're going to pray deliverance and healing over every person in this building, all right? Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I believe that I'm a sinner in need of a savior. And I believe that God, you love me so much that you sent Jesus to die for my sins. And on the third day, Jesus resurrected from the dead. I put my faith in Jesus Christ. I'm a disciple of Jesus, who makes disciples of Jesus. I will never be the same. Forgive me of all my sins and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Would you give God a hand right now? Come on. If that touched you, if you just received Jesus, Come on, it's a party in heaven because you gave your life to Jesus. It's a celebration. It's a party in heaven. Remember I told you to write some things down? Pull, the, pull that notebook out. Pull your phone out. Whatever it is that you got to write down. Some of you, you didn't have to write it down because it's just on your mind. You know exactly what it is. But we're going to pray right now, and the first thing we're going to do, we're going to forgive everyone who has hurt us. Someone say, forgive. forgive. That's what we're going to do right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead you in this prayer. I'm going to lead you, I'm going to say, I forgive. And then when I say, I forgive, right there out of your own mouth, everyone all across this building, whoever comes to mind, Say their name and say what you're forgiving them for. Because God is going to release you tonight. God is going to set you free. Some of you, there's someone, there's an there's a adult in this room. You hate your father. And God's going to release you from the hate of your father tonight. And he's going to heal you. And he's going to bring you love tonight. Come on. Just repeat after me. Say, I, I forgive. forgive. And go ahead and say, everybody who comes to mind and what you're forgiven for. Go ahead, go ahead, go, go, go. Go, go, go. Let them go, let it go, let it go. Healing right now in the name of Jesus. Healing right now in the name of Jesus. 
Come on, God is touching people right now all over this place. Let it go. Forgive them right now. You're not doing it because they deserve it. You're doing it because God forgave you. Come on, let it go right now. Let go of the molestation. Let go of the rape. Let go of the sexual abuse that they did to you in your life. Come on, let it go and be healed in the name of Jesus right now. Let go of the homosexuality right now. Come on, be healed of it right now. Let it go right now. All those abusers, come on, kick them out of your life. They no longer have a life. They don't have any ruling in your life anymore. Come on, let the forgiveness of God flood this room right now. Come on, Holy Spirit, begin to touch their hearts right now. All right. Raise your hand if you forgave someone right now. Come on. Raise your hand if you forgave someone. Come on. Doesn't it feel good to be free? Doesn't it feel good to let that go? Come on. Some of you, you still have not forgiven. You're still holding on to it. You could fool me, but you can't fool God who loves you so much, who wants to see you healed. Come on, right now is your time. Right now is your time to be healed. Forgive them, forgive them, forgive them. Come on. Now I want you to pull out your other list. Everything that you wrote down that you feel you need deliverance from. Pull that out. If you want to come to the altar as well, you still can. We have some altar workers that are going to help walk you guys through this. Pull it out. And what we're going to do is, a, is we're going to renounce, which means you're going to come into disagreement, right? You're no longer agreeing with that anymore. And we're going to repent. We're asking God for forgiveness, but we're saying we're turning away from that now. And we're going to serve God now. So right now, what we're going to do, pull those out and say, Jesus, I renounce and I repent of every demon that has been holding me down. I renounce and I repent of unforgiveness. I renounce and I repent of lust. I renounce, I repent of pride. I renounce, I repent of anger. I renounce, I repent of deception. I renounce and I repent of every stronghold in my life. I break every generational curse off of me tonight. I'm, a, I'm breaking the generational curses. Come on. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, I break you now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Whatever else is on your list, I want you to continue that. I renounce and I repent. We're going to keep worshiping. I renounce and I repent of everything on your list, okay? And we have altar workers here. I'm going to come down and pray with you guys as well. If you need any more prayer, do this one more. Repeat after me. Say, I renounce and I repent of rejection in the name of Jesus. God, I'm not rejected anymore but I'm a part of your family. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, give God some praise.